Hi YouTubers, welcome back. Um, it's another snow scene. I just want to do it. It's good practice for me as well because I haven't done that many over the years. They're not on the surface of it. They seem difficult to do, but they're not because a lot of it you don't have to paint. Well, you can tint it with the sky colour, but that will almost. Go, or as I said, plug my camera into the electric. Otherwise, it might die on us. There, that's it. Turn on. So I've sketched out a very simple scene here, just some farm buildings and and a bit of a road, the usual. And I'll do a blue back background. I'm using quite a bit of black at the moment. I'm experimenting with it. But I want to just get in. Uh, um, I'm, I like my wet, wet in wet skies. I'll leave the uh, the complicated. When I say complicated, the ones where you go from wet to dry and you get some nice effects. But I'm just going to paint around that house because I don't want that to be too too dry or wet because I'm going to crack on with that. Oh, let's just put in some water here. This, this paper, this is a 90 pound paper, it's pretty absorbent. By the time I get down to the bottom it'll start drying off. Okay, so a bit of uh, tin the sky with a bit of bit of Cajello and a bit of Rossiano. Oh, so a bit of red in there as well. Just wanted, uh, just a warm, warm sky. Bit of, bit of burnt sienna down on the, the base of it. Let's just put that one there. Uh, a bit stronger with the burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna. So it's a, it's a sort of deep red. Okay, could do anything with this paper. Right, so let's go for Burns Umber and Ultramarine. Good, good, good mix. This all dries much lighter than when it goes on. So, so there we are. So let's just get a good. Good, good mix on there. Let that bleed into the horizon. It's going a little bit darker here and there. All right, let's put in a little bit of pure ultramarine. Just a little bit. Now we don't want to do too much on that horizon. <coughs> Reclip the paper. I hope you look at my Patreon channel. I've got about 90 videos on there now. Got a lot going on. Slowly growing. So there are some free videos as well. So just. A, to have a look and see what the site's all about. Alright, uh, I'm going to dry that off now, so take your headphones off. So we've left a lot of this unpainted, and if you don't believe me about the uh, the white, uh, some of my paintings are painted on the, the other side. So so this is the white white sheet, just so you can get a an idea. 
how much it's tinted. So it carries the sky colour, but much lighter. Look, so you can go either way and you've got a nice contrast. But that is not white. Although take it away compared to that, it is. So that'll be tomorrow's piece of paper. Uh, I like this, but I also like the Fabriana that that's why I've, I've used for four and a half years. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to keep those colours, and I'm going to use this uh, this brush here. I love this brush. It comes to quite a chill, uh, sharp chisel end. Right, so a bit of burnt umber, then a bit of bit of ultramarine. It's going to be our distant colour. Uh, let's just. Just a little bit damp there. What you get with, the, with my paper is uh, on my board is about fifteen degrees, and when it's like that, the burn number. tends to granulate. Look, it separates and you can get some lovely effects with it. You can do that with burnt sienna as well and black and you can do the same with with uh, light red and ultramarine. But I'm not going to risk it with the uh, black. Let's go around these these roofs with some darker trees now. Try to keep plenty of air in the trees. Need that bigger there, I think. around this chimney stack, uh -huh. gone a bit too far there. And this one nice and dark because that's going to go over the roof. advice to you if you're a beginner is not to buy too many colours. Just buy a few. The ones that you would recommend. I use a similar palette to Stephen Cronin. Because if you if you overcomplicate if you buy too many colours you'll you'll confuse yourself. And it's better to learn the colour mixes yourself with a few colours. But, but once you've got your colours, stay with them. Learn everything they can do. So I'm warming these trees up now. These just shapes of the tree. Let's put a bit of, a bit of black in there, a bit of green, I think. A bit of burnt sienna. Just a bit of bit of evergreen in there. Just to highlight that roof. There's a cold picture in there. Right, let's go back into the some blue now. Try 
want to show a lot of trees. I'm going to go in with some heavier stuff on, on, the, on the front of these here. I just want to, just on that horizon. Not dark enough. So it all dries much lighter, but I want the contrast here with the uh, snow. Right, let's get some colour, some greens, warm greens. I can go over this when it's a bit drier. Trees in front of trees, sort of hedgerowy stuff with the distant trees behind. <coughs> okay, and the, this just doesn't lift out this paper very easily, so I'm not going to even try. Let's just change that shape there a little bit. Any unpleasant shapes? So let's just get in here with the dark bits here, just to outline. That roof. A bit more water. So it's burnt umber and ultramarine mainly. Negative painting, negative shape. Okay, let's get that roof line nice. I'm not going to give that a bit of a dry in a minute. Bit of red in there, I think. Painting winter and autumn, but you. I'm not saying my pictures are good, but I'm on a roll with this type of picture. <coughs> Let's get some heavier stuff in there. Let's, uh, ultramarine and blue and just reinforce some of this in here. Couldn't do this with Fabriano. They'd be crying out for mercy. Well, I'll go back to that later. Now, well, the supporting cast now, I have a little figure two when I look at that. Right, uh, so I'm going to put the road in. The same colours, just dry brush, just some hedgerows. Sticking above it's lovely dark, this uh, what I'm doing now. It's a burnt umber and an ultramarine. Oh, I'll get some blue in there. tree to come out of this. Bit of black in there. That's 
him on with a bit of black. Queen of Colours. Blob. We'll do some bits of edge row. Roland Hilda's master at this. It's a master of everything. Have a look. There's a link on my Facebook page. We put a link in in uh, Ron Ransom Disciple Facebook. Uh, Facebook. To uh, there's a Russian site, I suppose it was copyright infringement for them, but... But burn under the burst, yeah, no. But there's a compendium of a lot of his paintings in there. Some of them are absolutely mouth-watering. Where well, he did his trees. I learned all my trees from, from Roland, or well, most of them anyway. Just a bit of stuff just sticking up above the parapet. <coughs> okay, let's get this a bit, bit clearer here. Let's uh, put some ploughed fields in now. I'll get back to the hake. Never far from my hake, my trusty hake. Although it's not so trusty now, it's starting to lose its uh, hair. So let's put a sienna in there. So let's just put in some. Just the high furrows, or well, the furrows of the dips, and the mounds of, of these. This, you know? Oh, now we've got a plough field now. With the snow in between, in the furrow, for furrows. Okay. <coughs> Oh, we'll do the same on the other side, I think. We've got a bit, bit of blue and a bit of, bit of amber for the distant, more distant ones. Snow Hill Farm. I keep my palette nice and moist overnight, in between sessions, in a stay wet palette. You can use a plastic bag. Or Ziploc bags, spray the palette, but I've got this on a bed of uh, old towel. Right, let's get some warm in there. Otherwise it's all grey. Bit of detail in there. Right, okay. Uh, I think we've more or less done. More detail in these foreground ones. I 
Right, okay. So let's just develop these uh, bits and pieces on, on that roadway, pathway. Right, I'm going to come away from that and do those buildings. So, uh, the Roland Hilda trick of painting the uh, the snow slipping down the roof. Uh, it's a good little device, and I have no apologies for for showing it. Put the roof coming down there. So it's all slipping down there. And down to the eaves. Okay. Just a bit on this one. Probably won't show. Okay, I can put an edge of snow on there if I wish with a bit of gouache. I've left a slight margin around that roof. I'm going to have a little bit of a red brick chimney that still shows through. Sides of that little lean to. Okay. I think a little bit of umber faint. of red on the roof because it's been in the shelter or in the lee. Okay, I'll do with that. Okay, that's too far away really to be able to see too much of it, but uh, yeah, that that's okay. It's what it is, isn't it? A bit, a bit of a bit of um, umber in the uh, around here. Just painting on those windows. Okay, now we need to. Get in some uh, right. Let dry. Let's get in a bit of rigor and put in some. Oh, sweet my tea. The only painting I now do 
is for Patreon and for YouTube. I don't do anything other than this. I I got a lot of satisfaction. I, Just a few of these, these have been hundreds. No, I'm just picking up with just a palette grey. Careful what you put the heel of your hand in. It might be in the wet paint. Oh, it's a bit, a bit warmer. Ones here. When, when, when you're doing this for yourself, you can you can spend a bit of time and, and titivate it and plan it better than I. I'm just going straight in, I'm making a a demonstration for you to copy. This is quite a simple one. It looks complicated because there's a lot of hits and misses, but that's only because I've used the dry brush technique a lot. So as the paper dries, it, it, the high spots will catch the sides of the brush. Okay, well, that's all right, so that's same colours. Let's get in here with this. I can take canopy there. See my oh, I'm going to dry that. Uh, headphones off. Way over it, pretty bad. Eh? Never mind. Climbing up the tree. So I can cover that up a bit. Getting to the edge now, so I'm going a bit slap dash because I want to go over that tree in the foreground. Okay, some thick, some thin, go for the variety, avoid monotony. Okay, that'll do that. It's all right, I can put some little white bits of gouache in there. Right, okay, so. Um, back to the hake. No, back to the back to this brush. 
So we'll have a bit of bit of greeny umbery. Uh, I don't really want to do much with that. No, I'm not going to put a tree in. I'm going to put bushes in. So I'll use I'll use this little hake here. Uh, so a bit, a bit, a bit of this, a bit of that. Uh, a black. Put a bit of a tree in there. I might put a fence in. Just to get one in. A couple of figures. Lovely brush this one is too. Well, oh, just using that edge to go up into the uh, canopy of this little shrubby tree. Give him that bit of up there. Oh, a bit of shadow. I'll use my round brush for that. So the light is coming towards us, isn't it? So let's put in a bit of blue and a bit of red. Very weak. Shadow. Uh, right, I'm going to leave all that. You wouldn't see much of a shadow there. I'm going to dry it off and try to put a couple of figures or figure. It looks, it looks as if there's a lot there, but there isn't. It's mainly hit and miss. And all this here, this background, was you saw how I did that, with the side of the brush, not the tip, with the side. And I've just gone over it with a bit of, bit of this and that. Uh, right, uh, we'll use uh, vermilion, because it needs a bit of warming up, so just to, for, for a coat. So let's put one here. I'm making too stingy. Get a bit of Payne's grey, or a bit of black. A bit of amber. So the upper. 
Oh, that's the page way. Sort of bounce the end of there. Okay, that'll do. Right, now some gouache. There will be a couple of birds. Well, I'll put a couple of birds in the sky now. What I think of it, the, the sky's come out quite nice. Quite happy with that. The birds just link the, the sky to the land, I think. They're a little bit darker in there. Just a little bit of this here and there. So I shall show some banks of snow just here and there. a bit of light through the... I've got a bit muddy there. So this will just show a little bit of bit of light going back, just coming through from behind. Overdo it, why not? Right, I'll call that done. Then. Put the lid back. Some of the best brushes are your old ones. That's very old, but I, I don't know where it came from. Uh, I've got this lovely, lovely number five sable rigger, beautiful brush. Windsor & Newton, very expensive that was, for, for what it is, for the size of it. Well, that's fine. Always sign your work, because you never know, you might not think it's very good, but somebody else will love it. Right, we'll put that in the mount. Uh, I'll have a, zoom, have a zoom out. There we are, I've got another, another little man going home to his tea, struggling against the elements. I like the sky and I like that bit of blue because there's little focal points in the, in the sky and this lovely, that, that I use just raw sienna and a touch of burnt sienna and here red but it's all disappeared but you've got that creamy look of clouds beyond the clouds so I'm quite happy with some of that, not all of it. There you are, have a go yourself, copy, that's how you learn but eventually you'll uh, have to stand on your own two feet and work out your own compositions. It took me a long time, but it's, it's well worth it. I can paint where I want to be to a certain extent. So thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.